Where's the dude singing Hey There Delilah? Like, Delilah's in New York City, but he's a thousand miles away. Then where's the dude? To find out, I drew in a thousand mile radius circle around New York City to find some likely candidates. And something immediately popped out to me. This radius could indicate that the plain white tees are stranded in the Bermuda Triangle. But he did say I'd walk to you if I had no other way. So we should eliminate places that are not walkable to New York. This includes the Bahamas and Newfoundland. This leaves us with vast stretches of Canadian wilderness and American Midwesternness. From here, we have to rely on probability. Most likely, the singer is in a population hub. There's a few small towns that show up on the circle, but we're looking for a city. I tried looking at the music video for some clues. Clearly, Delilah is in New York City, taking the subway, walking down a rainy street. But the dude is just strumming his guitar in an empty room while his bandmates just hang out off to the side waiting for him to finish up. Well, it's, it's not completely empty. There's a folding chair and a bottle on the floor, a classic male living space. But nothing that could tell us where it... Wait, look, a clue. Texas, Billy Bob's Texas. It's a honky tonk in Fort Worth. Uh, unfortunately, Fort Worth is 1,400 miles away from New York City. So this was a red herring. What cities are even on the circle though? Minneapolis is slightly too far away, leaving the most likely candidate to be Tampa, Florida. From Tampa, you could take planes and trains and cars and even walk up the Appalachian Trail if you had no other way. So I can confidently place that Delilah's Meyer was living in Tampa when they sang the song. In 2008, the Plain White Tees were nominated at the Grammys for Song of the Year, which they lost to Amy Winehouse's rehab, which, yeah, I, it, yeah. Look at how 2008 those outfits are. Hang on, who's this? One of the cool things about the red carpet, because we're going to give you the red carpet secrets, is you get these little cheat sheets from the publicists as they walk by, so you know who the heck you're talking to. But then again, some people you recognize, like these guys right here, Taryn. We are with the plain white tees, and we're blessed to have Miss Delilah herself, the inspiration behind this song. So, Hey There Delilah isn't a completely fictional song. It was based on a girl that Tom Higginson met at a party one time, and never dated. Tom, what? why would your grand gesture of love be that you would walk very far to see someone, when that someone is a competitive cross-country runner? Forget Delilah, what about uh, Vanessa Carlton? She'd walk a thousand miles, or probably just take her flying piano. Or what about the Proclaimers? Either of them. They walk a thousand miles. I mean, they take a break halfway, but why are there so many songs about walking exactly 1,000 miles? Oh, I should mention that party where Tom met Delilah was in Chicago. And yeah, the plain white tees are from Chicago, but Tom, Chicago is only 700 miles away from New York City. Unless Tom lied intentionally. Sometimes bands do this, purposely alter geography. There's a place off Ocean Avenue, except there isn't. I always thought this song was about California, specifically Ocean Avenue in Santa Monica, but it's not. Yellow Card moved to California in the early 2000s, and the song was inspired by their homesickness for Jacksonville, Florida. I promise this isn't a Floridian bias, this is really true. Here's the real Ocean Avenue in Jacksonville, except it's not called Ocean Avenue, it's Ocean Boulevard. The band changed it to Avenue since it fit the song better. Avenue rhymes with you, Boulevard only rhymes with Chard or Shard or Alexander Skarsgård. But I think Yellow Card were onto something. Ocean Boulevard doesn't really feel like a boulevard. There's not any strong street naming conventions, but typically boulevards are large, wide, multi-lane arterial through fairs through a city often with a median in the center, sometimes with trees or flowers or grass or whatever. Whereas avenues are usually just side streets, usually running north to south. Let's just look at a few examples. Here's Astoria Boulevard in New York. And here's 25th Ave, a new. 
here's Dade Boulevard, Miami, and Jefferson Avenue. Here's Beach Boulevard in Jacksonville, and Ocean Avenue. I think Yellow Card are right. This is Ocean Avenue. Jacksonville should rename it. Cherry Street is still real, though. Wait, but maybe Hey There Delilah wasn't a purposeful exaggeration of distance. Who would exaggerate in a love song? Maybe it was just a mistake. Like with Toto's Africa, where they sing, As sure as Kilimanjaro rises like Olympus above the Serengeti. While Mount Kilimanjaro is a staggering 19,341 feet high, it's a full fifth of Delilah away from the Serengeti. You can't even see Kilimanjaro from the Serengeti. It gets blocked by the curvature of the earth. Speaking of Toto, what if I try geolocating a song that has more data to work with? Over the Rainbow. I always thought this song was called Somewhere Over the Rainbow, but yeah, it's, it's just Over the Rainbow. This is the opening song to The Wizard of Oz, where Dorothy sings her I Want song, and she wants to not be in Kansas. She wants to escape from her sepia-toned world into one of Technicolor. The lyrics at first glance make it seem as though this is a faraway place. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, where the clouds are far behind me, above the chimney tops, but there's one lyric that adds a cap onto how high over the rainbow can be. Somewhere over the rainbow, bluebirds fly. Bluebird isn't a species of bird, but given that Dorothy is in Kansas, it's most likely an eastern bluebird. Either way, songbirds typically don't fly that high. They usually stay below 500 feet. Flying any higher would just be a waste of energy. They only fly at their highest when they migrate, since they need the stronger winds higher in the atmosphere to travel those great distances since they're picky about the weather. According to the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute, most songbirds migrate between 500 and 2,000 feet, so we can place our maximum height to 2,000 feet. But what about our minimum? We need to figure out how high rainbows are, which is tricky since rainbows are all based on your perspective. Rainbows form when sunlight hits water droplets and refracts the light into your eye at around 42 degrees. But then how far away are they? And how high up do they go? Rainbows are a lie. They're not bows, they're cones. The only reason they look bow-shaped is because we can only perceive it from the front, which makes it look circular, and then the ground cuts off the bottom part. So rainbows aren't a set distance away from you. One water droplet doesn't refract much light, but when there's a cloud of them, that intensity compiles. So a rainbow is all the water droplets on the surface of this cone, from your eye to infinity. There's only one end to the rainbow. It's your eye. That's where the pot of gold is. So how do we get above a rainbow? Well, the question isn't how high, but when. As we change the time of day, we can see that the rain cone rotates opposite of the sun. Rainbows are only visible from sunrise when it's at its highest arc to 42 degrees, where it begins to fall into the earth. The same is true at sunset, but in the opposite direction. This means that there's a period of time every single day where you are somewhere over a potential rainbow. If you're close to some mist, you could see it. Dorothy didn't need to be flying, she just needed to be between these 42 degree times. We know that it's tornado season in Kansas in the film, which is late May, early June, so I can place that Dorothy is over the rainbow between 10.50am to 6.54pm. This just leaves above the chimney tops to be our minimum height. At the time, the highest chimneys would have been the factories in Topeka, or zinc smelters. From these photos, these chimneys appear to be, let's say, 200 feet? With all of this data, I can estimate that Over the Rainbow takes place between 200 feet to 2,000 feet over Kansas, between 10.50 a.m. to 6.54 p.m. And, I mean, yeah. This is pretty nice. It's like I'm in a hot air balloon. It's almost heaven. Wait, there's one more song geolocation I need to talk about. It's one that everyone has gotten wrong. Take me home, country roads. Stop. I know what you're thinking. Oh, I already know this one. 
The Shenandoah River and the Blue Ridge Mountains are both in the west of Virginia, not West Virginia. Therefore, Country Roads is actually about the west of Virginia. Ha 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 ha. But no. Country Roads is about Maryland. That's right, Metsy. The writers of the song, Bill Danoff and Taffy Nivart. Nivart? Long I, Nivart. Nivart, okay. Had never lived in West Virginia. Their inspiration came from a drive down Clopper Road to a family reunion in Maryland. But Maryland didn't fit the song structure, so they needed to come up with a different state to be the replacement. The setting of the song was formed when they drove down Highway 81 from DC to Roanoke. On that drive, they saw the Blue Ridge Mountains out in the distance, and when they passed the Shenandoah River into West Virginia, they decided that that should be what the song is about. But the border of Virginia and West Virginia isn't on the river, it's on the mountain line over here. When they first performed the song, someone came up to Bill afterwards and said, Did you know that the Blue Ridge Mountains and Shenandoah River aren't in West Virginia? They're mostly in the west of Virginia. Ha 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 ha. Bill responded, Well, yeah, the guy's going home, and he's going through Virginia on his way to West Virginia. So, Country Roads is about a road in the west of Virginia, but it's about West Virginia, but it's really about Maryland. But, does any of this even matter? Country Roads might have been made by an outsider's imagination of West Virginia, but West Virginia embraced it. It's the West Virginia song. West Virginia University chants Country Roads after their occasional home victories. And while they have a terrible state bird, they have by far one of the best state songs. Wait, why does West Virginia have four state songs? Let's stay on track. I'll look into that later. Maybe you can't actually geolocate a song. Maybe this was all just a silly waste of time. Like, Over the Rainbow is just about wanting to be free. It's not literally going a thousand feet up in the air. And the dude isn't in Tampa, is he? He's probably just in Chicago, where the band's from. Right. Row names don't even matter. There's no consistency. I mean, look at this one, Michigan Avenue. This avenue is a boulevard, and uh, there's a shadow avenue just below it. Oh, phew. Wait. This... this place. Why is it... why does it feel familiar? That's not a subway she was boarding. That's an L train. On the blue line. She's waiting at Damon Station. That angled building in the background. That's the Smurfit Stone building. She's walking across the Dusable Bridge. Delilah isn't in New York City. She's in Chicago. How is this possible? How can Delilah be in both Chicago and New York City? Unless she exists in a quantum state, existing in both cities at the same time. But then, where's the dude? Is he a thousand miles away from Chicago and New York City? There's only two points on the planet that that can possibly be. It's not up in the north, that would be the wilderness of Quebec. No, it must be south. I swear it's true. Hey there, 
said to Lila, don't you worry about the distance I've made sure it's exactly 1,000 miles I've measured avenues and boulevards All right, down to the shard Alexander Skarsgård